Before we get started, I just want to take a second to address the controversy of visiting a town famous for a tragedy. People were unjustly executed or died in prison in and around Salem in the 1600s due to fear and ignorance. This is a very sad thing. I can't say much on the subject besides my way of honoring the victims of this tragedy is making sure to use some of the opportunities offered in Salem to learn the history and to view and be respectful at the memorials. The town has chosen to embrace and profit off of the history, and right or wrong, I've chosen to let them make that decision for me and support them monetarily. Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Stacy, and this is my YouTube channel called Spookums, devoted to everything spooky. I'd like to welcome any new viewers and subscribers that joined us over the past week. I truly appreciate all my subscribers, and think it's really cool that I get to share my spooky world with you guys. Are you guys digging my quarantine look there? <laughs> Alright, so just to prepare you, this is by far the most editing I've ever done on a video. So hopefully it's not too bad. Anyways, let's get started. Today I have a spooky travel video for you taking a detailed deep dive through my entire trip to Salem, Massachusetts, including the Hocus Pocus filming sites. We're going to talk about where I stayed, where we parked, where we ate, where we shopped, and what we did. I tried to create a well-rounded trip, so in addition to the Salem spots, we also visited the Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, the Fisherman's Memorial in Gloucester, a few stops in Rhode Island, and an apple orchard. These are also included in the video. See the description for timestamps. We visited Salem, Massachusetts from September 17th to September 21st, 2019. We flew into Boston Logan Airport, which is about 30 minutes to Salem by car. We actually rented a car, but I know you can take the train, so maybe look into that if you're wanting to go the public transportation route. On the way from the airport, we stopped at Kelly's Roast Beef on Revere Beach. Food was pretty good, but the view was great. It was super cold, though. And, you know... After a three or four hour flight, food is necessary. So we stayed in Swampscott, which was an easy 11 minute drive to Salem. We stayed at a uh, awesome Airbnb with an ocean view. And this is just a personal preference. I love staying near the ocean whenever I can. Of course, prices change all the time, but it was $900 for five people to stay four nights. That made it 180 per person which I don't think is bad at all for four nights. Uh, this was cheaper than staying in Salem, and I, I love that view. Uh, that's actually a view of Boston across the bay there. It was an absolute fantastic stay. I'll be sure to put the link in the description. And so I definitely understand the attraction of wanting to stay right in Salem, but I took this video from the balcony, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed falling asleep to this every night. Okay, time to get started with our first full day in Salem. Alright, so the first issue to face is parking. You will definitely want to watch where you park here. There are many tow zones that we accidentally pulled into a few before uh, figuring out that that wasn't where we should park. But we did find free parking by the ferry here. Um, obviously, I can't guarantee that that's still okay to park for free when you guys go, but... You know, look for signs. If you come in October, I'm sure you'll have to pay wherever you park. Salem.org is your friend as far as parking in October goes. So definitely check that out. Um, this particular location, though, is at the end of Derby Street, which was a super great place to start our day. And we just slowly worked our way further and further throughout the day and Ubered back to our car at the end of it. And that worked out really well. Alright, so 
we the first place we went was this uh, place called 100 Derby Country Store. Uh, I recommend this place. It had a lot of great super souvenirs in it, and the lady at the counter was really nice. Uh, it was our first taste of that uh, heavy, like, you know, Northeast accent, which was kind of fun. Uh, the only reason I didn't buy anything there is that it was, like, the very first place we went, and then I super regretted not being able to get back there. So I say this one is definitely worth a stop. Okay, so next we went to Ye Old Pepper Company, America's oldest candy company established in 1806. This is a great little candy shop with a lot of chocolates, which are my favorite. Um, apparently, Oprah orders candy from here. Um, I love stopping in places like this when I travel. Doesn't that look amazing? We definitely walked away with some of that. Uh, I also love that they were really decked out for Halloween. Um, it was, like I said earlier, later in September when we went. And not as many places as you would think had Halloween stuff out. But this place was a delight, and I highly recommend it. Our first big stop for the day was the House of Seven Gables, which I loved. Okay, so Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote a book about this house called The House of Seven Gables, which I believe his cousin lived in when he was a kid, and Nathaniel Hawthorne actually lived next door, but he was over there a lot. It's a pretty old house and, of course, haunted, like most things in Salem. Um, if these pictures look interesting and you like spooky old houses with secret passageways, uh, this is for you. I had never read the book, so you definitely don't need to to appreciate it. I did buy the book at the gift shop, though. The gift shop is super great. Don't forget to stop by there. Um, I really like gift shops, which you will probably learn in this video. Um, be sure to check out their website for admission types. I went to look... But it's kind of like, I think it's kind of skewed right now based on everything that's happening in 2020. Uh, it was $10 each for us, though. And um, it is a guided tour because they don't want you to mess up anything in the house. And it, um, I think they leave on the hour, every hour. All right, time for lunch. So we went to the Witch's Brew Cafe, which is right across the street from the House of Seven Gables. Why did we pick the Witch's Brew Cafe? Because it's the freaking Witch's Brew Cafe in Salem, Massachusetts. I gotta say, when I was sitting there eating mozzarella sticks and looking out the window, it really hit me that I was really in Salem. I've been into spooky history and witchy things since I was around eight years old, and I just felt really lucky to be there at that point. Um... Food was nothing special, but I was still glad we went there. After lunch, we stopped at the Witchway Gifts right across the street, which I also recommend. I bought my little gargoyle figurine that I show in my uh, other Salem video here. Um, keep in mind that we're still about eight minutes walking distance from the car at this point. Salem is jam-packed with stuff to do. And from there, it's about a seven or eight minute walk to the Salem Witch Museum. Look at it. Isn't it just gorgeous? If you do anything witchy in Salem, do this. Remember that learning about the history thing we talked about earlier? This is how you do that. Hey guys, so we just got done doing the Witch Museum in Salem and it was really, really awesome. So I highly recommend this. It's not near as like, silly as I thought it was going to be. Like it's a really impressive like um, presentation. It's got a really great gift shop. I think it's well worth the money. It was like 13 bucks a person and yes you should do it. I couldn't take any pictures inside or a video and I'm sorry but just come here and do this. God I miss my hair that color. So yeah, the main thing you do is watch creepy looking animatronic figures tell the story of the witch trials. Uh, some people say it's boring, but I thought it was really interesting. If you're here during the busy season, I suggest getting your tickets first thing in the morning so you'll have a time slot reserved. Um, I would do this early in your trip because it kind of puts everything else in context so you like recognize when you hear certain names or see them around. Um, yeah, so okay. Bucket list item checked off for both of us here. 
Okay, so the next thing we did is take a two-minute walk to the visitor center. I just thought I would point this out because it's a good place to go to the bathroom, maybe get a map if you need it, and um, there's some maritime history stuff, too, if you want to look at it. You could sit down for a bit in the courtyard, and they also had bottles of water for sale there, too. Next, we went to the Old Bearing Point Cemetery, also known as the Charter Street Cemetery. This is the oldest cemetery in Salem and has um, none, none of the witches are buried in it. They're, nobody knows where they're buried because, you know, they weren't allowed to be buried on hollow ground. So they're somewhere around, but not, probably not there. Um, so it does have John Haythorne in it, who was a judge during the witch trials. Um, he is actually a relative of Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne, the author, changed his, uh, the spelling of his name to distance himself to not be, you know, spelled the same as somebody from the Salem Witch Trials. Um, so he's here. Uh, there's a few other famous people here. But the main thing is it's a really old cemetery in Salem. The tombstones are fantastically old and wonderful. And this definitely made my creepy little heart happy. Um, one thing about not being here during October is that we could actually walk around in the cemetery because starting in 2019, the city started closing the cemetery during October to avoid further damage to the tombstones. Dinner that night was at the lobster shanty, which I can't really tell you about the food because I don't like seafood. So, um, yeah. Yeah. But it was featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Guy Fieri. So check out that episode if you want to know about this restaurant. So that was all the main attractions uh, we saw that day. Besides the few that I'm going to break up into categories. Um, the first category I'm going to cover are the Hocus Pocus sites. And we did these kind of sprinkled throughout the trip. Uh, same with the, the shops on Essex Street. So... Those will be kind of in their own categories, but that pretty much wraps up our first full day in Salem. All right, so time for category number one, the Hocus Pocus sites. So I was six when Hocus Pocus came out, and, you know, I don't even know if that matters. I feel like Hocus Pocus is a movie for everybody. Like, if you're here, you like Hocus Pocus, right? If you're into witchy stuff... You like Hocus Pocus. It's great. Um, so, of course, we had to see the um, main filming locations when we were in Salem. So, first we saw the Ropes Mansion, which is the exterior of Allison's house. Um, which is where Danny collapses on the hay bales, and then her and Max talk. They get up. They see the big, awesomely decorated house. That's where we're at here. So this is 318 Essex Street, and it looks great in person. I really liked it. Like I said, it's called the Ropes Mansion is what it's it's actually called now. This is right next to the Witch House. That has nothing to do with Hocus Pocus, but I'm just letting you know that if you're going to see the Allison House, um, you might stop by the Witch House too. We didn't actually go in the Witch House, but I mean, look at it. It's super cool looking, and you can go in, and it's like... A time period house something I don't know exactly what it is but there's stuff to see in there so um, all right so that's Allison's house all right so the next one we have is Max Dennison's house which was really cool it's a really cool unique house it's kind of out of the way it's not like in with all the other tourist stuff like Allison's houses. Um, but I was super glad we took the chance to go see it. It was really kind of chill. Not anybody else was there. And um, I love the little thing on top of his house. And it's just a, like a really unique looking house. I assume it's unique to me. There might They might be all over New England, but I'm from Texas and I don't see houses like that here. So the third and final Hocus Pocus site that we saw... Uh, was the old town hall at 32 Derby Square. So the exterior of this was used for the exterior shots um, for the big party that the parents are at at the movie. Um, they also are at the end of the movie when they're stumbling out of the party. 
uh, it's there too. And when um, Max, Danny, and Allison um, go to the party and, you know, Bette Midler sings and all that, uh, they it's shown um, them walking into this building as well. And that was cool to see. It kind of sneaks up on you. We were just kind of wandering around. And I was like, oh, my God, there it is. That was cool. Um, so those were the three sites that we did. But there are more. Like, I know there is a cemetery in Marblehead, which isn't too far from Sa Salem, where they filmed. Um, they filmed at one of the schools, too, in Salem. So there's more to see. So research that if that's, like, the main reason you're going. And just FYI, if you're planning on doing a guided tour, the Hocus Pocus Tour Company that's in town is not a tour devoted to the movie. They probably take you by a couple of the sites, but yeah, just know that they just do general tours of Salem like all the others. I have not been on it, but I've seen where other people have made that mistake, and I just want to let you guys know. All right, so being near the Old Town Hall... Brings me to my next category, which is the shops on Essex Street. Right next door to the Old Town Hall is a great bookstore called Wicked Good Books. I really enjoyed this bookstore. Uh, I've kind of made it a thing to start going to bookstores no matter where I travel. I greatly encourage you to support them when you're in town. I greatly encourage you to support all local bookstores. Uh, I bought a book while I was there. And also ordered a t-shirt from them online just like a month ago to support them while they um, aren't allowed to be open inside. This is summer of 2020, by the way. That's why they're not allowed to be open. Um, okay, so another notable store on Essex Street is Coons Card and Gift Shop. If you're on a limited budget, I highly suggest you visit this store before deciding on a Salem shirt or hoodie or really any Salem swag to buy. The store is great. They also have, like, crystals and, like, some nice-looking tarot cards and that sort of stuff. But um, I I loved all their clothes. Uh, I think everybody in the group did. We probably went back there two or three times during the trip. Yeah, so don't don't decide on a t-shirt till you get here if you're not buying, like, five. Okay, so if you're wanting a more spooky, rustic witch shop with, like, herbs and crystals and oils and spell books... And like less souvenir type stuff, you want the Coven's Cottage, um, which is just a beautiful, interesting, kind of a more traditional type witch, witch shop. Yeah, these pictures are used with permission, actually, from their Facebook page. I wondered why I didn't have any pictures, but then uh, she reminded me when I messaged her that they don't allow photography in there. So that's why I didn't have any pictures inside. So... Yeah, these, so just a reminder from when you're there, no pictures inside. Okay, so another witch shop with kind of a bit of a darker feel to it is the Hex Old World Witchery Shop. This one leans more towards like animal bones and voodoo dolls and Satan statues than the Coven's Cottage, but still has like candles and general kind of magic stuff in it. Um, they actually have psychics there sometimes, too. Uh, it's a really interesting place to check out. Alright, also, uh, there is Harrison's Comics. Um, it's really close to Hex's Old World Witchery. Um, all these shops I'm talking about are really close together. I, I have a, a map up, I'm sure, by now, and you can see how close they are. Um, if you like, so, Harrison's Comics. If you like comic books or pop culture shops... You should definitely check out that, too. Um, there's nothing specifically Salem about this one, but it's probably one of the best I've been to, and I really liked it. Just with those few shops, I think we've definitely covered that you need to spend some time on Essex Street. Seriously, walk up and down that street and go in anything that strikes your fancy. But there is another shop I wanted to recommend that was off Essex, Essex Street just a bit, and that is... Housewitch Home and Healing on Washington Street. I hope I'm saying that right. Housewitch Home and Healing. Uh, this is a beautiful store that basically feels like a home goods store for witches. With a bit of like kind of feminist culture to it. And just... Uh, I just love this store. This is the store I probably browse the most online. Like I feel like I could find like presents there always for at least one or two of my friends like I just wish it was closer <laughs> so 
I went back and got permission from several of these shops to use some of their Facebook pictures um, so you could kind of get a really good idea of what they're about uh, better than I'm probably explaining because you know I could only be in there for maybe 30 or 40 minutes per shop if that um, yeah so hopefully these pictures kind of tell you what they're about better than I can probably but yeah so there are plenty more these are just the ones that were my favorites that I'm kind of generally highlighting here so of course you're gonna want to check these out you want a souvenir you want to check out a magic shop for sure but uh, just a little bit of advice when we spent a long time just going to stores and not doing anything else it got a little like consumerism heavy for me so my advice would be to kind of sprinkle these shops in with you know like some tours or some some food or, or some like kind of little events museum type stuff to do um just because it got a little like a little weird just trying to look for stuff to buy <laughs> like like I wasn't really experiencing the town as much yeah so that's my advice for that so now we're done with those two categories I mentioned and we're back to going uh, day by day and we're on to our second full day in Salem so probably the best tip I could give anybody for traveling is to get up early um, it really helps it you know things are less crowded when it's earlier you just get to fit more into your day especially stuff that might close at five or something like that um, I would consider the latest we're going to be getting out of the house in the morning when we're traveling is probably by like eight or nine a.m. Um, earliest I think we've managed a 5 30 a.m. before Anyway, so the main event of our second full day was actually our trip to the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast. It's around an hour and a half from Salem, and it's the main reason I thought we should rent a car for this trip, actually. Yeah, we had a blast. It was a really great experience there at um, the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast. We only did a tour. We didn't stay the night, but you can stay the night. Hey, so we're fixing to do the Lizzie Borden house in Fall River, Massachusetts, and we're super excited. Okay, so they won't let me film inside, of course, but it's cool. It's quite, it's a little bit of a drive from where we're staying, but it's not bad. Probably later in the fall, it's September now, the leaves weren't really changing as much, but if you went later, the leaves would be super changing and awesome. So come down to Salem. If you come to Salem in October, you could come down here an hour and a half and do the Lizzie Borden house. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'll let you know what I think later, but in the gift shop, I already saw they have little magnets with the crime scene on them. And I'm trying to decide if I can put those up in my cubicle at work or not, but <laughs> we'll see about that. So I'm gonna show you what a buy later, but I'll also, yeah, let you know what I think. Yeah, I chickened out. I didn't put the uh, murder magnet up at my cubicle. <laughs> I, uh, I did put another one up. I can't remember what it looks like because I haven't been to work for so long. But yeah, uh, I also bought a shot glass. Okay, so this is a well-preserved old house that Lizzie Borden and her family lived in in 1892. You guys ready? I'm, I'm going to do the little rhyme. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. All right, so that should give you an idea of who Lizzie Borden is. Her mother, which actually I believe that was her stepmother, and her father were murdered in the house. It seems like she probably did it. You guys have probably seen uh, the movie with Christina Ricci in it. Yeah, she was never convicted, though. So it's always just kind of a mystery, you know, if you're kind of into true crime stuff, this is, this is where you want to be, probably. I wish I knew the name of our tour guide, but this is a picture of him, and he was absolutely great. So what you're going to do is basically walk through this house, like preserved 1892 style, 
and your tour guide tells you the story of the murders, of what happened that day and everything. There's also a bit of role play involved. My friend was Lizzie, and I was her sister, so that was cool. Um, it's just really neat seeing the old house, hearing a true crime story. Um, he was great, and, you know, I definitely walked away thinking differently of the whole story than I did when I walked in. So, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, tickets for a tour were 22 bucks a piece, and we did buy our tickets at the door, but you can buy them online. Uh, we were going to park on the street, and we started to pay to park on the street, but then we realized there were plenty of parking spaces up by the place, um, but, you know, depending on what time, you know, how busy it is, it might be different. Uh, yeah, so it was really great. Um, so next we went to the cemetery where the whole family is buried and, uh, saw their, their graves. Um, you know, it was kind of, it was a little difficult to find them at first, but then somebody saw us looking and was like, they're over there. So yeah, that helped. Um, but I am just now realizing how weird it is that their accused murderer is buried next to them. Like it's kind of widely assumed that she did commit the murder, but she's buried in the family plot right next to them. I mean, she was never convicted, so I guess it's fine. But, you know, if you like cemeteries also, this was a super nice cemetery. It was a super nice, super nice day, and it was just really awesome to be there. Okay, so after the Lizzie Borden sites, we went to a place called Diego's for lunch in um, Newport, Rhode Island. I'd never been to Rhode Island before, so I thought it'd be a fun stop for a bit. Um, my quesadilla at Diego's was really good, and the view was nice. After that, we walked around Thames Street. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that right. Thames? Thames? Thames. A bit, and uh, bought some stuff. It's just kind of like, it's it's a really historic street in Rhode Island, and there's a bunch of places to shop near there. Um, I think a friend of ours bought some hot sauce and my friend bought a shirt. I probably bought a sh no, I bought a magnet. So after that, we went to the cliff walk, which is this really scenic walk with the ocean on one side and some fancy mansions on the other side. I know you can walk all the way to the other side, but we only had time to walk part of the way. Um, but yeah, take a look. Okay, so as promised, so you got mansions on this side, there's, there's Matt again, <laughs> and you got the ocean on this side, and that's what this whole little walk here is all about, except honestly, I thought the houses, there would be more mansions, um, most of it is like greenery, like you see right here, so if you're just here for the mansions, maybe not. But if you're here for awesome ocean views, definitely do that. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Super gorgeous, super fun and relaxing. Um, you did have to pay to park near the beach, but you didn't have to pay to walk on the cliff walk. Um, so it was a cheaper activity to do also. All right, so after that, we headed back to our Airbnb and uh, commented on every single Dunkin' Donuts on the way. <laughs> and there were a ton. That was almost like a game in the car. So that was fun. Um, so we went back to Salem that night for dinner at the Flying Saucer Pizza Company, which was my favorite meal we ate on the trip. Uh, Matt and I shared the Nick Fury pizza, which was really good. Uh, I didn't take any good pics or video there because I was a little tired by that point, but it was a pretty fun little place with a really unique menu, kind of like nerdy decor. Um, yeah, super great. 
I really do crave that pizza sometimes, though. It had like a buffalo chicken and mac and cheese on it, I think. <laughs> but it was still really good. Um, yeah, so that wraps up that day. All right, so the last full day of the trip, we went to Russell Orchards in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Uh, this is a little over 30 minutes from Salem and was really fun. So this is mainly an apple orchard, I think, but they grow all kinds of stuff depending on the season. Uh, there were pumpkins and ducks and geese and a donkey and some other animals. Uh, they had a nice store where I drank like three cups of hot apple cider, which was amazing. And we had apple donuts for breakfast, which were also amazing. I can't believe I didn't get a picture of those. They were great. Um, so in the store, they sold souvenirs and a bunch of different like locally made stuff there. Um, there was a lot. It was a nice store. Uh, they do wine tastings there. Uh, I paid just a few dollars to pick a couple apples. Like it, it wasn't expensive. and I mean, it's not like I can really take a bunch of apples home with me back on the plane. But it was still fun. I just wanted to do it. So I'm at the Russell Orchards in Ipswich, Massachusetts right now. And we're picking apples. And that's cool. Super New England thing to do. Um, yeah, so it's fun. Not gonna get many apples, just gonna, it's mainly just to be here and the apple cider and the apple donuts we have for breakfast was super awesome. Yep, yep. Yay, vacation. Okay, so this was super neat to me because I'm from Texas and we don't have apple orchards and I'm obsessed with fall because that's just who I am and I love apple stuff. So, yeah, I included this because I figure some of you guys probably do too. And it was really, really fun. Next, we went over to Gloucester, Massachusetts and stopped at the beach by the Fisherman's Memorial. Okay, so have you seen The Perfect Storm? Spoilers! Uh, the real guys that inspired that movie, their names are included on this memorial. Um, if you're super interested in that, there's also a restaurant where the guys used to hang out um, here called uh, The Crow's Nest. So maybe look at that if, that's, if you really love that movie. I sort of love maritime history stuff, so this was a neat stop to look at the memorial and enjoy the views for a little while before we headed back to Salem. Oh man, everything's so cool. We're here on the beach. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. When we got back to Salem, we stopped at Proctor's Ledge. So this is the actual hanging spot of the innocent people accused of witchcraft. It's on the hill right above this memorial. Um, a nice local guy that lived nearby said it was in this exact spot. This spot was specifically determined in 2017 by the city historians. Unlike what those posts on Facebook say, they did not build a Walgreens over it. <laughs> there is a Walgreens close by, but no, they didn't build a Walgreens on it. This spot was not found until 2017. So this is slightly complicated to find, so I'll try to make it as easy as I can. Uh, you're going to want to search for Proctor's Ledge on Google Maps. Okay, so here's Proctor's Ledge, and here's the Walgreens, and this is Pope Street. So, okay, so here's the memorial. Up here is where they were executed. Over here is the Walgreens. So you could probably park at the Walgreens and walk over here. Okay, so that was my Salem trip. And these are the lovely people that went with me. If anyone is still actually watching this, thank you so much. I did actually put some work into this video. And it was my first attempt at a travel video. Uh, I really tried to pack some useful information in here so sorry if that was sort of a boring ride for anyone not planning a trip 
If you need help with anything or have any questions about my trip, please comment below or private message me. I'd love to help you get out and travel. I super enjoy planning. So yeah, if, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. Um, don't travel now though. I'm talking post 2020. Don't, don't go there now. Things are closed. Post 2020, start saving now though. All right, so if you like spooky travel, I'll have more of those coming up eventually. Um, if you like Halloween or random spooky shit, um, maybe subscribe if you want. Sort of. Maybe. I don't know. All right. Bye, you guys. Thanks for watching.